isn't that kind of satisfying? Well, I should probably explain this. The hottest new update introduced additional parts and overclocking for most existing parts. Overclocking can completely change the part behavior, often making it significantly stronger. So, let's try overclocking a small blaster. Cool, but everything is on fire now. Overclocking is very easy, but doing it safely is harder. Let's try to transport the heat somewhere else to store it. To do that, we can place some wires from one of the marked positions and connect them to some heat storages. That's better, but now we are stuck with the heat in the storage. To get rid of it, we can just place some dissipation. Those are so called radiators. They are most efficient when placed without any obstructions. This means we will want to place them facing open space whenever possible. You can also use thermal missiles which can both door and get rid of heat while even dealing damage to the enemy. Be careful when connecting multiple parts. Connections do not pass through most parts. This setup with overclocked shields for example will not work. To make it work we have to make a path around the shield. A setup like this works pretty well. The shields are supplied from the bottom and the heat connection is on top. The only exceptions are some thermal parts. If you are in doubt, look at these orange lines which tells you if a part is connected to the thermal system or not. You can see the lines whenever you are holding a thermal part, like a wire for example. The thermal stats on the side are also quite useful. They tell you how much heat you produce and radiate. But be careful, at the time of making this video, the calculation does not account for the heat tax of exchangers and overclocked engine rooms, both of which we will cover later. Also be careful with overclocked shields. They produce huge amounts of heat when they are being dealt damage, which the stats don't warn you about. Some parts do not require the use of thermal batteries at all, but they are necessary if you produce big bursts of heat to prevent big spikes from overstraining the network. Now to the new weapon, the Thermal Resonance Lens or simply TRL. Well, they can be used with just a single radiator, but if you want a strong beam, you are going to need some upgrades as this is a modular part. There are two different parts that do that. Amplification pumps increase the beam's damage output, allowing it to melt armor in no time. Dilation pumps increase the beam's width, allowing it to heat up more tiles at once. Enough of them can allow you to even cook ships from the inside. To connect these pumps, they just need to be somewhere in the thermal system. Make sure to connect both nodes on the dilation pump as you will not receive the full bonus otherwise. So if you have multiple TRL and multiple pumps in the same heat system, which turrets get the buff? It's all of them. The buff will be reduced with each additional TRL. So putting three of them in series does not triple your efficiency, but it is still pretty powerful. But be careful, each additional turret puts more strain on your pumps, causing them to consume more energy and produce more heat. Against shields they do not deal a ton of damage, but they inflict a debuff that allows other weapons to break through. They are however very effective against armor all on their own. And the reduced damage resistance debuff is nothing to scoff at either. If you damage shields, then the dilation pumps are useless and only amplification deals extra damage to the generator. But if you want to go for the highest shield debuff, 
and dilation pumps are much more efficient than amplification. Do note that the debuff does not stack, so using multiple TRL does not increase it. If your parts overheat or get shot by a TRL, then they do not receive direct damage, but hull heat. Hull heat has some pretty realistic properties. It spreads from one part to adjacent ones and it also slowly dissipates. This dissipation is faster if there is a lot of empty space around the part. If a flammable part like an overclocked plaster without adequate temperature control got too hot, it will start catching fire. If something is really hot, then it will even start taking damage. Fires got reworked in the Meltdown update and now slowly grow and do not completely destroy parts, but rather scorch them. Scorch parts do not work and reduce crew speed, but they are cheaper to repair than completely destroyed sections. If a part already has hull heat, your pipes won't be able to transport that heat away. For that, you need heat exchangers. They will slowly cool surrounding parts and transfer the heat to your pipe network, but they also inflict a 40% heat tax. Keep in mind that exchangers cover per tile, not per part. So this shield will not be completely covered and will catch fire. You can use heat exchangers to protect against enemy TRL or to cool your parts that might overheat. They can also serve as a kind of wireless connection to your thermal network. TRL deal damage in form of hull heat to your shields, so you might want to add exchangers in addition to the wire to protect against those. There is one last method to get rid of heat, and that is just using the natural passive dissipation. Normally, this is simply not viable, as parts produce huge bursts of heat, but structure has the very useful property of incredibly high diffusion speeds and will also probably radiate slightly more heat to other parts. The exact values will probably change slightly, as there are currently some interesting designs out there. So, you want your part to touch as many structure tiles as possible and leave some gaps for the heat to radiate. This obviously requires a lot of space, but it theoretically saves a lot of resources you would otherwise have had to spend on radiators. The sun also got a rework that makes it deal hull heat instead of normal damage now. This means that you can build sun divers using purely heat exchangers. Using shields is more efficient, but the sun deals both heat damage to the shield generator and regular damage, which quickly depletes energy. For the end, here are some small tips. The resonance beams have the useful property of having their own thermal storage. So it's often not even required to run additional heat storage if your ship has them. To use overclocks in career mode, you need both the heat management tech and the specific tech for the parts you want to overclock. Placing all radiators in a row is great for space efficiency, but sometimes you want more defense. For that, you can instead space them out like this. That also has the benefit of you being able to split off additional redundant connections. You only need to connect one part of the railgun to your thermal system. You also cannot really fan overclocked railguns. So I would recommend that you use fewer but stronger ones. Overclocked engine rooms allow you to cool thrusters that are not connected to the thermal network, but also inflict a heat tax. You can mitigate the tax by connecting reachable thrusters to the pipe network. Now you know the basics of thermals, but you still have a lot to learn, 
So try to slowly approach the heat until someday you will be one with it.